Let's talk about a few of the complications that, 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 that you can expect after a, a, a revision knee replacement. You've just mentioned one, uh, the complication of stiffness and how you, you deal with that with uh, perhaps multiple different manipulations to try to continue to get the maximum range of motion. What else are you worried about as a surgeon in the revision art artificial knee that you might not be worried about so much in the, uh, in the primary knee? Well, first I want to comment on, on the stiffness issue, and that is that patients do have to understand it's not only about physical therapy. It's what you do between the physical therapy sessions that is equally as important. The patients who avoid manipulations are the ones that work on their knee between physical therapy sessions. So I, I just wanted to add that point. The second part is really the answer to your question, what are the things we worry about? I think the first thing we worry about is earlier loosening. Let me give you an idea why. You've now removed a previous implant. Some of the bone that's left behind is not as good as the bone that's there in a primary knee replacement. So you're now fixing metal to a base that's not quite as juicy, shall we say, not quite as ready for an implant as a primary. So the fixation of a revision knee replacement is something that may not be as strong. Now a good surgeon compensates by adding what are called stems that go up the center of the bone to help augment, to help add to the fixation. But we worry about loosening of the metal to the bone a lot more in a revision knee replacement. So that is the, the primary mechanical thing we worry about. The non-mechanical thing, of course, is something we've talked about is infection. Very careful about wound infections, problems with wound healing, and problems with early infections within the first two to three months due to the fact that this is a revision knee, much more traumatic surgery, and for reasons that are not fully clear, are definitely more susceptible, as we talked about, to getting infection. Other things that could happen, such as blood clots, um, called DVTs, deep vein thrombosis, we worry about them in primaries as well as in revisions, and I think we have a similar monitoring related to that. Uh, and the last thing we worry about, which is a complication, which many patients don't think of as a complication, but I do, is the complication of call, called I am not satisfied with the result. You can get a patient who has a revision, the motion looks pretty good, the x-rays look very good, but they're not satisfied with the result. It's maybe a little bit stiffness, a little bit of achiness, a little bit of pain that can't be explained through any mechanical thing. And I find that is much higher in a revision than in a primary knee replacement. And a patient has to expect it to not be exactly like the last. It's not like replacing an engine in a car, which should give you the same performance as the previous engine. What is left behind when you remove a previous knee replacement does not allow, with the associated scar, for the same quality of long-term result. I think that's, that's an excellent point. I think that, that it sounds like you make you make a, a great effort to try and make sure that the patient understands that before they go through this procedure. So it sounds like your patients are already, uh, what, what I could say is, is probably have realistic expectations before they go into this procedure and understand that, that they may not want to expect the same result that they got from the first uh, artificial knee, the primary artificial knee. So, so thank you for, for going through that. I guess the last thing that I would like to ask you, and that is, you know, we've talked about the revision not being as good as the primary. What about how long it lasts? How long does a primary, how long can you expect a, a, a revision total knee replacement to last when compared to a primary? You know, the longevity, which is the amount of time an implant lasts, depends on a number of factors. It depends on the patient's weight, the patient's activity level, the quality of the metal and the plastic. So let's look at someone who had a primary knee replacement, let's just say 12 years ago, 
and now needs one this year in 2010. Let's compare a couple of the features. Number one, we've had a lot of advances in improved plastics and what are called the bearing surfaces. So even a primary today should last many more years than a primary put in 12 years ago because the plastic and the metal bearing surfaces have seen a lot of improvements. The second thing is that in a revision, the patient is older. And though not always a rule, if someone's 12, 15 years older, they may be a little less active. So if we originally replaced the first one at 62, now 12 years later, the patient is 74. They may not be as active to wear it out. So if you add the improved plastic and metal bearing surface with the less activity, that part, I'm confident in a revision, should last longer than a primary for those two practical reasons. The part that I worry about that would cause an earlier failure, which could happen, is the attachment of the metal to the bone that's remaining. If that doesn't fail, then a primary and a revision knee replacement if they had the same metal and plastic used and the same activity level of the patient should last the same amount of time. But those variables change decade to decade. So I am confident that a well done revision in someone who has good enough bone to take the implant should last as long and at least by today's standards due to the improved metal and plastic through advances by industry and engineering should maybe even last longer, at least from the plastic point of view. Well, that's good news because, you know, I think a decade ago, the, the statistics would have shown that revisions just don't last uh, nearly as long as a primary total knee replacement. I'm glad to hear that we've really come a long way in terms of, of making the revision, in some ways the equivalent of the primary, with, with the caveat that it's a much bigger operation, uh, maybe a, a bigger a number of complications that could go wrong, but if you have a successful revision, what I think I hear you saying is that you're, you're, you should be in pretty good stead. You should have a knee that's going to last you that 12 to 15 years that we used to expect from a, from a good primary, let's say a decade ago. Is that accurate? I think that's accurate. I think it's important to keep in mind that in the last 10 years specifically, some tremendous academic surgeons in this country have given a lot of wisdom and a lot of guidance on how to properly implant a revision. That might not have been there 10, 12 years ago. So there's been a lot of surgeon advances. But I also don't want to overlook the implant choices and the implant availability that has allowed us options for the patients that have made revisions more successful as well. The data from 10, 12 years ago represented both the techniques and the implant available at that time. Both advances in techniques from some very excellent surgeons who have taught all of us around this country to the advances in the metal and the options to compensate for bone loss and implant these better have added to the longevity of a revision knee replacement. Well, I think that's definitely good news as our population ages more and more every year, so, so great news. Um, as we close this discussion, which I, I, wanna, I wanna tell you, I really appreciate this discussion because I think we've really gotten uh, into information that, that patients need to know, and I think that this is a very comprehensive discussion about you know, what, to, to, what to expect in terms of a revision total knee replacement. Is there anything that you feel like we haven't covered or anything else that you would like patients to know about revision knee replacements? Well, I think we've covered quite a bit. I think the only thing that I'd like to add is that it's important that you choose a surgeon who is comfortable with revisions. And the good news in that is there are very few joint replacement surgeons in this country who take on knee revisions who aren't comfortable with it. It's a challenging operation. It's one that requires a lot of thought before the surgery, a lot of skill during the surgery, and a lot of attachment to your patient and what their expectations are, and a lot of time 
understanding and working with the patient on a one-to-one -one level to make sure they understand what it takes to get an optimal result. Well, thanks a lot. I think that's, that's a, a very good point. I want to thank you again for uh, sharing this information with patients and uh, look forward to further discussions in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr.